Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. So last week what I presented was this three speed remote controlled manual gearbox. Now the idea of this gearbox is that using this medium sized power functions motor to drive a gear stepper what you can do is step between one of three different gears uh, using your remote control. Um, and it's, uh, that works by driving this stepping mechanism which in turn drives this arm which pushes a uh, gearing mechanism along the bottom there. Now this was very much a prototype, uh, it did work quite well but it did have some issues and what I've done this week is improved upon this prototype and built a new version into an actual functioning remote controlled 3 speed car. Um, however before I present the car I will talk you through this gearbox again and highlight some of the issues and how I've solved them. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was choose how to change gears in this design. So of course LEGO provides the standard uh, driving ring in the middle there and two clutch gears. That's one way of doing it. You can select between driving in the left gear or the right gear. Of course the problem with this one is it allows you to choose between one of two speeds. You'd need two of these to be able to create three. So instead of that I've chosen to use the more, I guess, traditional way of doing it, which is to use an, an shiftable axle that has got a number of gears that mesh depending on the position that axle mesh differently. So in this case we have got um, a high gear, so we've got this gear meshing with the smaller gear. Then as we move across, we have got um, a 6 to 2 16 teeth meshing for an intermediate gear. Then finally, we move it all the way to the left. We are driving uh, the large gear with the small gear to create an overall low gear. Now, the issue with this particular uh, way of doing it is that those center gears, because they're flat gears, the teeth have to align exactly in order to, to mesh easily. Um, they can, unless they're aligned, they, they tend to not move across very easily if they align them exactly for that to work. So the way I got around that in this particular design was to use this particular mechanism here where I have created uh, a technique just using the bevel gears for shifting or for the meshing. Uh, so what I've got at the bottom here is the meshing gears and then I've got a secondary stage with actual gearing ratios. So in this case when we're in this position here, we've got um, a high gear, so we can rotate like that, and then we move across one, we've got these two meshing, and that creates this particular gearing um, ratio there, which is the middle gear, and then finally when we move that across to there, we've got uh, the low gear. So this way is a way around uh, that um, flat gear uh, meshing problem. So the method I used for driving this axle across to change gears was to use the stepper mechanism that's from the official uh, Lego uh, Bugatti set and this is a fantastic stepper mechanism. What this allows you to do is by using this paddle, this kind of shift uh, that axle in discrete 90 degree angles and by using that combined with uh, this particular mechanism here I could convert the three different 90 degree positions into three linear positions. So we've got uh, that 0 degrees, 90 in 180 and what that does it shifts that lift arm from three discrete positions one two and three which match the three positions on the uh, axle uh, for the gear changes. Now there was a problem with this translation from the angles onto the linear positions uh, what you find is in this position the uh, mapping is correct in this position is correct but in the middle uh, that um, the linear position isn't quite accurate because of the angle of that lift arm uh, and that was a small issue for this particular gearbox and I've actually improved upon that in my new gearbox and I'll tell you about that in a minute. And the final issue I found with this gearbox design is that once the uh, main motor is going there's a lot of loading on the output uh, there's actually not a lot of power left for the uh, stepper change function and this actually requires a fair amount of torque in order to, to make the stepper work and to drive the stepper uh, mechanism and uh, changing lever. Um, and one way around that was to use one of these servo motors. So the servo motor can be connected to the uh, front of the gearbox as well. And um, this allows us to drive it more easily um, as it's got a lot more torque than just the medium sized motor. Okay, so in case you didn't see the video on this particular gearbox, I'll just give you a quick demonstration of it working in action. I've connected it up to the power supply. There's the uh, large motor driving the main axle output and the medium motor that is in charge of changing gear. So currently we're in low gear, we just turn it on, we can see uh, outputs are rotating slowly and then as I change gears, we are now in the medium gear and finally in high gear by moving the remote backwards, go back to medium and low gear. So that works quite well. 
you can hear that crunching and again that is that middle gear not meshing exactly due to this translation mechanism from the angles to the linear positions and that's why uh, that central gear is um, sounding a little bit crunchy. Okay so now I'll just tell you about some of the improvements I've made in this gearbox to go from the prototype to the gearbox that I've implemented in the remote controlled three speed car. So the first thing I thought about was the fact that this medium sized motor has trouble uh, when there's a lot of loading on that main motor uh, to shift the paddle gear. So one option I thought about was use the servo motor to drive um, this gear shifting me mechanism directly. Now if you're not familiar with the servo motor it's a relatively rare part, it's only available in about three different sets. Uh, it's part of the power function series and what's special about it is that it implements one of three different positions. Uh, so unlike a, a normal motor that rotates, this one pretty much goes on to th one of three different angles. I'll just demonstrate that with the remote control. So if I drive uh, the motor like that, it turns 90 degrees right, and I let go of the remote, it goes back into the center. If I go in the other direction, it rotates left and goes back in the center. So that is a very specialized part, and it's, uh, it's so great in that it automatically sends us back again. It's one of the issues that you do have with a number of designs, like steering, for example, where you want to return back to the center after you've uh, rotated the steering wheel. So it's, it's a very interesting and, and great part. And I thought, well, I can use that to, um, because it's more powerful, I can use that to drive the stepping mechanism. But then I thought about it and I thought, well, hang on, I'm trying to create three different gears and the stepper motor has got three different positions. Why don't I just connect that directly to the gear change mechanism? And by doing that, I can eliminate entirely the uh, stepper mechanism, you know, as nice as it is. Uh, by using the servo motor, I can create the three different positions that I need for the three different gear positions. Now the other issue that I explained before was the mapping from the angles, the uh, three different 90 degree positions onto that linear positions and what I did in this particular model was to use this lift arm. But uh, someone in the comments actually pointed out, and they were quite correct, is that you can better use a, uh, a gear rack with a 12 tooth gear. Now this is another way of doing it, so at the back here I've got the 90 degree position and by using the gear rack driven by that 12 tooth gear I can create three positions as well. Now of course the difference between this one and my previous design is that these positions are exact. Uh, so that is a big improvement uh, over this design. Um, by using this particular technique I can guarantee that the three positions map clearly from the three 90 degree positions onto three linear positions which of course is very important for that gear change mechanism to make sure that the gears line up correctly uh, for each of the, um, the speeds. Right, and the final improvement I made was around the bevel gear meshing. So what I talked about earlier is that it was important for this meshing for it to work is for these to be bevel gears rather than straight gears because the straight gears you need the teeth to align exactly to be able to move the um, gears across like this and change speeds. However, last week someone pointed out in the comments, which is a very good point, is that only one of these gears needs to be a bevel gear and not both for this to actually to work correctly, to be self-correcting. Now, of course, when you've got a uh, Lego spacing of two between the axles, you can only really mesh either two bevel gears or two straight gears. There's no combination of gears that's a bevel gear and a straight gear. However, if you go to a different spacing, if you go to two across and one up, which of course is very interesting, uh, then in that case, uh, there are a few more combinations of meshings available and you find that every meshing is either a combination or it's always a combination of a straight gear and a bevel gear. There's no combinations of just straight gears or just bevel gears. So what that means is that uh, every meshing combination, like I said, is going to be a, a bevel with a straight gear and therefore um, you can actually eliminate an entire row of gears by doing it this way. So in this particular instance, what I've got here is I've got a 20 meshing with a 16. Uh, in this position I've got the 12 meshing with a 24 and in the final position we've got the other way around with 24 meshing with a 12. So what that means is the middle gear uh, is just a uh, like I say a 6 to 5 uh, or a you know 20 to 16. If I go to the high gear it's pretty much a 2 to 1, it's 24 to 12. And if I go to low gear it's the other way around, uh, it's a half, it's a 12 to 24. So that's a great way of eliminating an entire row of gears and simplifying the overall mechanism for switching uh, the gear changes. Okay, so in summary, the improvements of this gearbox is that I've eliminated the stepper mechanism, 
I have improved the uh, mapping from angles onto the linear position by using the gear rack and I've eliminated an entire row of gears for the gear change mechanism so all these improvements have been implemented into the final product which is the remote controlled three speed car that I'll just demonstrate now okay so here it is I've got the battery pack at the back I've turned that on in the middle here is the power function servo motor that drives through this gearing mechanism the gear switch mechanism underneath so this is the main axle that um, moves across for the gear switches uh, I've also got a large power function motor just for the steering and that goes through one of those white clutches in order to prevent the overdrive so I'll just quickly demonstrate the uh, gear change mechanism I've got the remote and by going like that we can switch between uh, the middle gear and switching to a high gear in the other direction we switch to a low gear so low gear and high gear so of course high gears want to go faster now normally it's kind of in the middle gear and if we need to go uh, slower or have more power we move down to the low gear uh, the steering is just simply done like that with like I said with a large power functions motor uh, you can see that white clutch gear slipping once we reach the limit of the steering mechanism and then the main motor just uh, just drives like that through a differential at the back uh, which is pretty standard for these types of cars okay so let's drive the car we'll put it over here we can drive forward drive back drive forward we can steer like this. this is the steering goes very well uh, so now we'll change gear so we go from the middle gear to a low gear and we can now go a lot slower go back to the middle gear a bit faster uh, back to low gear and Okay, I'll now test out the famous ramp test. So we're in middle gear, we're going to try and drive up the ramp. As we're trying to go up the ramp, the car fails, cannot get up the ramp. Try again. Get my steering right. As you can see, we cannot get up the ramp. We will now go back down, change the low gear, and try going up the ramp. And look at that. Straight up the ramp, no problem. And low gear. Off we go. Okay, so that was my remote controlled three speed car. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.